idea. Now it's 12 p.m. ora sono le 12 and we can start our event. So um, my name is Ariana Danino and I am the cultural events coordinator of the Dante Alighieri Society of BC. Quindi good afternoon, buon pomeriggio a tutti. On behalf of the Dante Society, I welcome you all to the launch of Blessed or Damned, the Divine Comedy is Served, Beata o Dannata, La Divina Commedia Servita, the book of recipes created by Italian chef and photographer, Claudia Fraschini. Thank you. And just a second, I, um, I want to change my echo, my, my slide. Before we start, let me just spend a few words about the Dante Alighieri Society, a nonprofit organization whose mission is the promotion of Italian language and culture. We offer online courses in Italian language through the Dante Alighieri, through the Dante Lang Italian Language School at all levels and on Zoom. We also offer cultural events in different formats, webinars, talks, workshops, and you are welcome to uh, support us uh, either by becoming a member or by making a donation. And now, without further ado, let me introduce you to uh, Chef Claudia Fraschini. Hi, everybody. Chef Claudia is an artist of taste who wisely mixes her three passions, cooking, photography and travel, as basic ingredients of her recipes for life. She has almost 30 years of experience in the field of catering and teaching cooking classes through her cooking factory. So join me in welcoming Chef Claudia and her colleague, Chef Andrea Lavacca, among us in Vancouver. Thank you so much. I'm very, very excited to have you all here in my cooking factory, uh, just to share with you the book we wrote this summer in a very, very difficult period, you know? Um, COVID-1920 is a very, very, made this year very, very hard. And our future should be still hard. But the way we took this book was, uh, I'm sorry if my English is not perfect, okay? So help me if I made some uh, mistakes. So we started writing this book because we, we were very, very, uh, down uh, uh, with the COVID 2020 and uh, we were uh, trying to find out a way that mean to us a newborn okay we were living into a hell okay we we get in March we fall down into the hell and uh, we start everything at work so we stop any any activity and we didn't have nothing to do only stay home and uh, stay closed. So we made out my, our mind uh, trying to find uh, a new idea to go back to working anyway. So we thought that the 2021 should be the anniversary of the death of, the, of Dante. So we thought about the Divina Commedia. And you see, I'm a, um, a long, long story with the Divina Commedia because as anybody, we have studied at school but I had a grandmother, the, the mother of my father, that uh, in the last year of her life, she, she gets sick. And the only things that she remembered was Divina Commedia. So she started talking about Divina Commedia from the morning to the evening, all day long, 20, 40 times a day, she starts talking to me about the Divina Commedia. Nel mezzo del cammino di nostra vita mi ritrovai per una selva oscura che la diritta via si era smarrita. So it was a very uh, emotional link to this book. And, uh, but we didn't have the culture about talking about Dante Alighieri in, uh, in the deepest way, you know? So we tried to find out a very joyful way to talk about the Divina Commedia. So we tried to find some recipes that should be linked to all the circle 
of the Divina Commedia through the hell, purgatory, and paradise. So we try to find a very comic link to the recipes and the syrup. And um, I, I'm, I, I love a lot to make photos. So I'm a photographer, uh, but I'm a sort of photographer because I, I used to make photos by myself. I didn't have a uh, go to school in a uh, photographical technical, but I used to take picture in the same way I used to cook. So I just use my passion, my vision, and uh, my emotion, okay? So we try to put everything together, photos, food, and history, okay? So this is the way this uh, book was born. And I'm so pleased to, to be here and uh, present to you our work and show you two recipe, recipes uh, for tonight because we choose two recipes just to make a show cooking for you and uh, let you understand the way we cook. You see, Italy is uh, well known around, all around the world just for uh, his uh, gastronomical uh, culture and tradition. For us, for Italian people, the food is not only a matter of uh, just eat and feed ourselves. It's a different way of life, okay? I understand the way I cook in the same way the way I, I live. And uh, every time I make a, a, session, a session of uh, school cooking, I used to introduce this team. Um, love, energy, and pleasure are the secret of Italian culture and Italian gastronomy, okay? The way we used to cook is the way the grandmother and the mother used to feed the son in the family with love and uh, with energy and with passion. We are just quite uh, losing these uh, values already because you know all around the world the fast food is taking the rule and uh, substitute the uh, ancient way to cook to the new way, very speedy way to say, stay seated at the table and to go through the meal. But the meal in Italy is a very, very important moment because all the people that stay together share something. They share the food, they share the emotion, they share the love. And uh, at the end of the lunch or the dinner, they used to have be fitted in their soul. Their soul, okay? So if you don't understand something, please, Stop me and ask me what you don't understand, okay? Do you have any questions for me? Not yet, non ancora. So, um, this school uh, was born five years ago at the end of my work life, okay? It was a project that means to me uh, a new world, okay? I start, I stop living uh, in the old way and I enjoy living in a new way with the cooking factory. So this is a project that, that means to me, start again and uh, live again, okay? In a different way. So I put everything I know inside here and uh, we start making so many things around the, the food world. Uh, that means uh, school, lessons, uh, team building, presentation, uh, events, and uh, whatever you want to think about uh, food, and it is involved with food, okay? So with me, we have Andrea and we have Sabrina. This is my team. We are three from the beginning and we are still three now because uh, the heart of this place is made not only by me, but is uh, a heart of three people that share my dream and uh, let became a project. So I'm not successful in a dream. I'm successful in a project because a dream is just an idea. A project is that dream that is fulfilled with uh, particular details and uh, any, any, any walk. Okay, so I, I'm a very, very, Please to be here and tell you my story. So if you want, we can start with the cooking lesson. Okay, so we start with, uh, you know, we have to 
two uh, recipes. One is from the paradise, and this is the third. That is uh, drooling um, albicoque and apricots with uh, I, I take the, the paper because I can make some mistake. Cognac apricots uh, filled with hazelnut, bitter chocolates, and a full field of rapid uh, with a um, puff pastry. Okay, it's a very very easy. Uh, recipes that uh, is linked to the circle in the heaven uh, with the um, loving soul. So we are talking about loving people. Okay, so the, this is why we have chosen these recipes. You, we take the apricots that are already put in the um, in the cognac. Okay, I make a solution of cognac water and sugar in the same part. So I take some uh, apricots that are dried. So they are in this way, I show you. Okay, just this one, I show you here. Okay, you see, or here. Just the dried one. Choose always the clear one, not the brown one. Okay, because the clear one, maybe here come from France or Morocco but they are very, very flower and very, very sweet. The darkest ones are not so good because they took a lot of uh, sun and they are burned. So they lost all the flower of the apricots, okay? So it's important that you go around and choose the clear apricots, okay? Already dried, soft and gummy, okay? In this way. I take these apricots and I put in a, in a can with a, Half water, half cognac, and three, four. Wait, did I oh. Oh, sorry, it was here. Oh. You see, I put here three spoon of uh, sugar, apricots, um, star anise, and cognac and water, and that's it. And I close and I put in the darker place, and you say it is stay there one week. After one week, you can eat it, but it would be so better time after time. So this is the best idea for uh, making presents by yourself. So you can uh, make this can a uh, present for anybody in uh, winter time, for Christmas time, for uh, whatever you want, okay? They are good in this way without cooking, okay? They are very, very, very special. But with this, that we can take, show you one. You take this apricot, I, I go to the other camera. If you want to uh, go look for a Sabrina Lala, you will show the details, okay? If you want to put me on uh, Sabrina Lala, on the video, you cut the apricot in two, and you see we have a fresh apricot. Do you see it? You see it? Yes, we see. Yes? Okay. So we have two half. This means to me two halves of two people, okay? That stay together and they will be linked with the uh, they will fill it with chocolate, uh, lady fingers, and nuts that comes from Chiamonte, and they will link together with puff pastry. This, you see, is a metaphoric link of loving people. See? Okay, so Andrea, that is nearby me. Okay, start with cutting the, uh, the apricot. So, is anybody has uh, ingredients to make the recipe with, the, with me? No. No? Sabrina? C'è qualcuno che ha le ricette che ha gli ingredienti? Scorri, vedi un po'? Ok. Yeah, good. While Andrea cuts the, the apricots, I prepare the filling. So 
I took some biscuits that are lady fingers, some chocolate. I'm not following the, the dose of the ingredients because we are making a little portion, okay? So, we add also the nuts. They are already granted, okay? We put some sugar, not too much because we have already the biscuits that are sweet. And we put also a piece of butter. Okay, then we start mixing everything. When everything is uh, very softly granted, you, we add an egg just to make the glow and stay everything together while we go into the oven. If the eggs, are you see, because I'm not following the dose, it's a little bit too soft. So I need it stronger. So I add two more biscuits because the egg was too big. I finished to make my job. So you see, it's soft and it's creamy, but it's strong. Now, we put everything in a sucker posh. If you don't have the sucker posh, you, you can do it with a spoon, with a little spoon, okay? Perhaps you could explain that a sucker posh is in French, and it... yes, <laughs> but it's not only there. It's a pastry pocket. You see, it's this one. Normally, you have in this tube or in a, a reusable material. This is a, just the way we use and throw it away. Okay, ready to use and throw away. Okay, it's just for hygienical question that we take this one. Now, we cut. Cut the top of the sucker posh. We take the apricot. And we are going to fulfill 
the apricot in this way, okay? Be gentle because it will uh, fluff in the oven. Okay, so this is done. We take puff puff sheet already laid down and we cut some string. One centimeter. Okay. As you have your strips, okay, you take your apricots and you start ruling the buff pastry in the okay, and you put into the uh, the pan that goes into the oven, okay. I'm gonna wash my hands, Andrea. We go. So we start with the dessert just because to have the time to go into the oven and cook it. Because otherwise we have to pre-cook before, but you won't see the result at the end. Of the, uh, and the, trust me that you can do it, okay? There's no secret, there's no uh, different passage that I'm uh, hiding to you, okay? So when all the, the apricots are done, you can go into the oven, pre-cook, pre-preheat uh, it uh, at uh, 180, uh, 180, 180 degrees centigrade degrees. I don't, uh, I don't remember the translation in Fahrenheit. If you have Fahrenheit. Then, before finishing and going to the oven. You heat, you whisk uh, an egg, and you paint just the puff the pastry with the head just to give the gold color to the apricots. Okay, and we go into the oven. So we go and we cook it just. Uh, 10, 12 minutes, okay? And it's done. So do you have any question about this? Are you writing in the chat room uh, the question you have? No more? So you're welcome to ask questions in the chat on the site. Eh, potete fare domande sulla chat se avete bisogno di fare domande. Tutto chiarissimo. Dobbiamo solo mangiarcele poi. <laughs> non eh, certo. Non mangiare, just uh, taste it. You have to improve yourself and try to do it because I can't offer you right now. Yes. So I, I can uh, explain to you the smell that, it, that we come out from the oven in a couple of minutes because uh, the, the smell starting to come out from the oven and it should be very sweet, flowery, fruity and uh, with the center of cognac and it's very, very good. Uh, trust me, it's good. Hi, uh, Claudia, I have a question from uh, Mara Zanotto who asks if you cooked the hazelnuts. No, I didn't cook the hazelnuts because they are going to be cooked in the oven. So they are uh, normally, they are toasted already, but uh, they are regular toasted as not, they are not fresh. So the one you buy normally, they are not fresh as nuts, but they are, they are already toasted, okay? Then they go into the oven and toast again. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, sorry. Um, I usually buy the raw as a nut, the one that are yeah. not uh, toasted. So can I toast them before and then blend them and then use it in the recipe? No, you don't need to have, you are like, the, the hazelnut you buy, they are raw, but yes. they are dried. They yes. are not fresh. So you see, when the hazelnut are fresh, we intend the hazelnut already uh, pick up from the tree. And they are very, very soft and tender. The one you, are, uh, you buy, they are already dry, just a little bit into the oven. But they are not toasted just to uh, burn the, the oil that is inside the hazelnut. Okay. okay. So normally, okay. if you want to, do, to improve your uh, flavor of hazelnut, you toast them, okay? Because mm -hmm. uh, the, the heat of the pan or of the oven should uh, come, uh, cause out the oil and the essence of the nuts. You don't have to do it before because it's going to happen already in the no. oven. Yeah. Okay, so okay. you don't need to make anything. Just take the nuts as you buy them, there's nuts, and yes. use them, okay? And um, if they have the skin? If they have the skin, uh, yeah. you have to put them in your hands, okay? Okay. Or if the skin is very, very thick and uh, very, very uh, difficult to lay, down, uh, lay out, you have to put in the oven just three, four minutes, okay? Just to dry the skin and then you come out and you move it to your hands, you pass it to your hands and you remove the skin because the skin is very tanny. And um, so if you eat it, it's very, very difficult to... To chew it. <laughs> uh, yes, to bite, but it's not a question of bite. It's a question of sens uh, sensation that you have in your mouth. Okay. okay, it's very, very strong. It's not, it's a little bit uh, bitter. Okay, so mm -hmm. you won't like it. I, I don't like the, the, the skin of the nuts. So I, I used to buy already peel it. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other question? Was the hazelnut uh, flour used or just hazelnuts? Hazelnuts. I see, because the, re the recipe said fl hazelnut flour. Uh, if you don't find uh, hazelnut, you can use uh, as a uh, hazelnut flour. But normally, okay. I suggest to use hazelnut because uh, the original flour is better than the chemical one. Okay, thank okay? you. You're welcome. Grazie. Any other? Uh, how long did you marinate the apricots? That was one of the questions. Oh, how long did you marinate the apricots. apricots. Uh, take one week to be set, okay? So you prepare in five minutes, then you close it and you put in the fridge or in your darkest part of your kitchen and you let stay there just for a week, okay? Then they are ready to be eaten. If you want to be faster than this, and you have the vacuum machine, you can put into a pocket and uh, make the vacuum inside. And that way, in that way, it should be ready in uh, 24 hours. Okay? Normally, the vacuum is used to uh, make faster the okay. connection of the flour between uh, the, the ingredients, okay? So it's very, very faster and it's very, very easy to use this uh, system. But normally at home, if you don't have vacuum, it's better that you put into the to a can and you leave it in one, one week. Okay. It should Thank be okay. You. Thank you. But if they stay at the end, when you prepare this kind of apricot, you can eat in one year, okay? then uh, they, they rest there and they are always good, okay? Because the alcohol conserve everything. Yeah. And also the sugar that is inside. So you don't have to be afraid to lose everything if you prepare just a little bit more than you need because you will have them 
always ready at the end of the dinner, just to after coffee, just uh, uh, instead of fresh fruits if you don't have it, or uh, just uh, to like a treat. A yes. treat. Yes, yes, yes. At the end of your dinner or your meal. That's yes. good. Thank you. That's an idea. So you can pre prepare in the same way all kind of dried fruits. So you can, it's a, it's a game, you know? Right. I show you this with the uh, apricots, but if you want, you can make with every kind of dried fruits, okay? Yeah. So it's very, very amazing because you can add flour as your uh, suggestion. So you can put, uh, and I put in these uh, star anise, but I, another way you can put other spices. You can put uh, lemon, orange, mandarino, uh, skin, just to make some flour, a different flour, or add uh, cinnamon, whatever you want, okay? If you take dried apple and you put the cognac and the water and the canary, the cinnamon, you can have a very, very particular kind of apple for Christmas. Nice, nice. Thank you. Thank you. You see, I'm a teacher of, uh, I'm a very strange kind of teacher because I used to, explain the way we used to cook you know recipes are not the secrets of a chef secrets of a chef is what you can do with the, whatever you know okay so just follow your uh, stomach that is my brain and uh, for your love and passion and everything will be very easy to do it you have a question yes i do um I unbelievably made these just now as you were speaking. Great. I don't, don't know how it happened, but when I was doing the mixing, gzz, 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 I missed what you actually put in the, uh, in here. So I won it and you, do you put an egg in there or not? Yes, yeah, also an egg. Okay, good. So egg, chocolate, uh, the savoriadi, the butter, salt, a chocolate. Am I missing anything? Yes, it's okay. Great. Okay. A, a piece of butter. Hazelnut. Yeah, I got all of that. You forgot the nuts. I got the nuts. I, okay, I did it. Them. Okay. I made hazelnut thing. I ground, I roasted them, then I grounded them. Right. But I didn't know about the apricots being marinated. So we're going to wing okay. it. It's okay. Okay. The way I used to teach cooking, you can do the recipe what you have inside the, the house. Okay. You don't yeah, have no, we did it. to follow my idea. You can change. Okay. All good. My dad does. My dad puts grappa. Uh, he puts uh, uh, blueberries and cherries under grappa and sugar. That's his little secret. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Great. you. So put them into the oven. So we will see the result. Second, how long and for what temperature? Uh, one uh, uh, one hundred eighty degrees. Okay. Centigrades. Don't know. Celsius. And how long? Ah, uh, 12, 15 minutes. All right, see you then. Okay, great. So we can start making gnocchi. So we go on with the gnocchi. So we already baked the potatoes, you know, I ask you for the one who want to make gnocchi with me to bake already the potatoes or cook the potatoes. The potatoes we use for making gnocchi are red potatoes that are uh, yellow, normally regular yellow inside, but the skin is red. Why this? I choose this potato because these potatoes are normally much more dry instead the, the yellow paste of regular or fresh potatoes, new potatoes, okay? So, this kind of potato is very, very um, correct for making gnocchi. If you don't find this kind of potatoes, never mind. It's not a matter, okay? Because you can do whatever with the potatoes you find. It should be okay because I will show a trick uh, for save every kind of gnocchi with any kind of potatoes, okay? So making gnocchi should be from today until the end of time, very, very easy for everyone. Okay, no more soft gnocchi, biggest gnocchi, uh, too hard gnocchi, never more. So 
I pre-cooked the potatoes, so I put the potatoes into aluminum and I baked them just for 30, 35 minutes in the oven at uh, 200 degrees Celsius, okay? And when you go into the potatoes with a knife or with a fork, it's soft and tender. When it's soft and tender, it's cooked. So you open it and you remove all the potatoes from the end. And now, what you need is this. Maybe you have this or you have not this. These are the best potatoes. If you don't have it or you don't, uh, it would be Everything's okay? Yes. Yes, we have that. Everything's okay? Okay. So, this is the fresh potatoes. If you have it, it should be very easy because you cut the potatoes into in this way, okay? You see, it's cooked inside. It's very, very dry. I'll show you here. No, I don't show you there. So, maybe you see it, okay? So, I put... Всем привет! Меня зовут Влада Четыри, Гален, Кабиков. И представляйте, это мой делать. Первый хит, да! I'm sorry, someone is getting inside the... What is that? Someone is hacking us. Someone is inside our... <laughs> making fun of us, making jokes. I'm sorry about this. I don't know who he is. Can you unmute? I don't know who he is because yeah, everyone... I think, I think it's somebody that is entering, you know, without... Unmute everybody, at least it's easier. Everyone is muted. Everybody's muted. Also me, so unmute me. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, cut the potatoes in two. And you don't have to peel the potatoes, okay? Because it would be very easy. Potatoes face down. Press. There is someone here who is doing nasty tricks to us and do you want that you close and, everything? And we don't know. It's, an, it's a hacker from Russia because they, they, they sing in Russia. So, who? Vlad. 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 Yeah. Okay. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, great. You can hear me? Okay. So if you don't have the pressed potatoes, you can do in this way. Use a fork and press the potato and smash it down, okay? And you can use your smashed potato already, okay? Never use a mixer, electrical mixer with the iron blade, okay? Because if you use this kind of uh, processor, you will have a glue, okay? Very, very sticky potatoes. Uh, and you, it would be very hard to make in your food, okay? So press with the potatoes with the, the, the fork, you see, would be very, very soft. And you go ahead in this way. 
And you have the potato I show you here. Okay? You see it? Okay. See, see, e lì ci lo vediamo. We can see it there. Great. So, if you don't want to, if you have a lot of gnocchi to make, you can use also this. This is uh, just for vegetables, okay? To make the soup. But you can put the potatoes inside without the skin and press them. As you prefer, you can show, you can use the system you prefer, okay? You can also use these and make this kind of work, okay? You take the potatoes and you, you smash it down in this way. There is a question, why did you bake the potatoes instead of boiling them? Because making gnocchi is uh, a question of uh, ruling the water, okay? If we boil the potatoes, normally the, the potato should add more water inside them. If we bake it, you see, the water inside the potatoes will come out and dry the potatoes. So we will need less flour and no eggs, okay? The original gnocchi is made only by potatoes and flour. Normally you can find so many recipes that should add an egg, but it's not the correct recipe, okay? Because gnocchi is a question of making it together, staying together potatoes with less flour as possible. So less flour, the flour when we go cooking, <coughs> sorry, will be uh, very easy to let's say everything together, okay? So, I'll show you now one thing. Andrea, pass one time the, the potatoes, but I like to have the potatoes very, very soft and tender. So I used to work them just a little bit more, okay? Just to let them uh, get cold. And in this way, gnocchi should be very soft and, uh, and tender without any little piece of potato inside, okay? So, now the potatoes are dried, okay? But if you want to be sure, you can use potato flakes, okay? Potato flakes is just potatoes already dried and flaked, okay? This is what, what, did, uh, what would happen when we, when we add the potato flakes. The potato flakes will absorb the extra water inside the potatoes and let the, the, the dough stay much more dry, okay? So we start working the potatoes with the flakes. We add just a little bit more, just to be sure that tonight we are going to have the right potatoes. Claudia, Christina is asking if an apostolic measure would be okay to use. A measure? A Me apostolic measure. Uh, what's a measure? I don't know exactly what an apostolic measure is. So. Ah, the, the, the one that you hit the potato. Yes, it should be okay. But you have to work a lot, okay? Until everything is soft. Okay. Now, let's take the potatoes, just a few minutes to get them dry. And we start adding the flour, okay? For one kilo of uh, uh, potatoes, already cooked and uh, worked, we should add 300 grams of flour, okay? At least. So we work in this way. While we work the dough and the, the potatoes, the, the flakes we put inside should be dry. Sure. 
Yes. So uh, they are ask, asking me how much flour for one kilo of uh, cooked potatoes you will need to make your Hello. See if there is someone. If there is someone who shouldn't be here. Let me just, they, are, they keep on hacking us. Let me see if I, Pajasta, uh, Astavne. Andiamo avanti, non importa. Brava che parli in russo, brava. Non Andiamo. importa. Allora. Complimenti per il tuo russo. Infatti. <laughs> so, so how much flowers that I, I, I learned at school just to make sure they leave us alone. It's amazing. Yes, so, it is. Peach is not here all over the world, still in, in, uh, in Russia, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So no. again, how much the, the ratio between potatoes and flour? Potatoes should be 300 grams of flour and 100 grams of uh, uh, potato flakes. But normally, if you try to make them, remember this. Before making gnocchi, when you uh, take the dough in your hands and this uh, is, is not already wet, it's done, okay? It stayed together and it's soft, it's not wet at all, it's already, okay? But before making all the gnocchi, my suggestion is put some boiling water on a fire, make one gnocco and try it. Because when I was young, I used to, the first things that I started preparing was gnocchi with my grandma, so and with my mother. But when I was alone, normally the first time I used to make gnocchi too soft. So I put, I, I prepare everything. I do all the gnocchi and I cook them and they then uh, were too soft and they stay all sticky together. <laughs> So I had to throw everything away. So I learned to make a test. So you make a gnocco in this way, and you put in the boiling water. You ask until it comes up. Change the camera and it goes to Sabrina Lalai, please. Okay, the gnocco, I try to make it, and you see, is perfect. Okay, so we can prepare them. The gnocchi should be soft, but it, it should be hard, just enough to get uh, cooked with the cheese. If it's too soft, it will be broken, okay? So add some more flour if you are not sure. But never add eggs, because if you add eggs, you will add water. So you will need much more flour. So the way we prepare the potato is drying them. Okay, so we put them in the, in the oven and we don't boil them. Then we add potato flakes to extra, uh, to extract the extra water that is in the clay, in the, the potatoes. So if you add the eggs, it's a glue in the kitchen, okay? So every time we put the eggs, everything stays together, okay? Because the egg will be, be, became uh, harder and we they take everything together. But if we put the eggs, we will put extra flour, okay? At the end, in the end, the, the gnocchi should be like those you buy already done and prepared in the supermarket. Okay, not so good. <laughs> okay. Not, so now Andrea is making the gnocchi, and I show you how to make the the lines. Take a fork. 
Make a... Lo vedo, no? Make a, a, a little string rolling. Be soft and gentle with your hands. So you have to be very gentle with your hands. Don't press because you don't have to leave the, the fingerprints, okay? But you have only to roll the pin in this way, okay? And open your finger just to let the, the rolling pin be longer and longer, okay? If you are afraid that the, it will stick, put some flour on the table, okay? At this time, you can choose the dimension of the gnocchi you want to do, okay? I normally used to love the small gnocchi. So I used to make a very little rolling, okay? But for the first time, I prefer you to make bigger because it's easier, okay? Then you take the fork, you put on the, on the fork and you roll it, okay? Yes, they, uh, they are asked me if they can do a uh, gnocchi with any other kind of uh, flour. Okay, if you want, if you have a problem with the gluten, uh, so uh, celiac people or uh, allergic people, you can use uh, rice flour. But if you make gnocchi with rice flour, in that case, you have to add the eggs because you know the the flour is different between one and the other so the effect with the rice flour should be very very dry because the rice is much more absorbent than uh, the other one so we have to put some more water and less flakes okay remember this because uh, as you see, when you make risotto, the rice should grow absorbing the water. So it's normal, okay? You, uh, cooking is a matter of logical questions, okay? So if you think at the ingredients and what happened regularly in, uh, in the kitchen, you will easily understand what's going on. So if you add flour, rice flour, you will add an egg, because we need extra water to absorb, to be absorbed by the rice. Okay, so the process is just a little bit different, but you can have them, okay? You can use any other kind of flour, but remember always to add the eggs. Okay, so in Italy, you can have a plain gnocchi without lines, or just the regular one. Claudia, there was also someone who was asking how long do you have to work the, the dough, this kind of dough with the potato? Uh, until it's, uh, it stays together, it's soft, and uh, it doesn't have any little piece that move inside and, st and stay out, okay? And everything is dry. So it takes five minutes, no more. So making the line to the gnocchi was the game when I was children, when I was child, to enjoy my grandmother in the kitchen. She makes gnocchi and I root them. That's why I'm just a little bit quick. You have to be gentle. Don't press too much because we, you will broke the gnocchi. Just try and be very, very quick. You see, the gnocco is done when you have the line outside and you have the all inside. You have the fingerprint in the all of the gnocchi and the line outside. This should be very useful when you go into the cooking pan and the, 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 the salts that you choose that it should be 
butter and parmesan uh, tomatoes or like the tonight fontina with the creamy cheese and it would be very very perfect you see i didn't put any salt okay if you find any recipes that suggest you to put some salt don't believe them okay never put the salt in any dough okay only for the pizza and bread you can put the, the, the gut, but for pasta gnocchi never put the salt because salt has a hygroscopic qualities so the salt normally comes out of the water from the ingredients okay so if you make gnocchi with the salt and you let them stay laying down on the table for one two hours until you are ready to cook them you will find them sticky and uh, lay down to the the, uh, the clothes that they are using to cook in them okay so it should be a tragedy Claudia, there is a question. If the gnocco sticks to the fork, is it because, is it too watery? Uh, Mara asks. Yes. Just work it just a little bit more or pass the gnocchi with some flour, okay? Sorry, i show you one thing. When you prepare the gnocchi on the table, remember this, put some flour on them and then gentle, Pass them into the flour in this way, always, so they won't stick together again, okay? And then you take them and you put in the layer, okay? So you have your gnocchi. So, before cooking the gnocchi, we prepare the cheese. You clean the table. So I don't know if you find uh, which kind of cheese you find in uh, Vancouver, but now we are using Fontina d'Aosta, this is a DOP, that is a very flour cheese, and this is made with the milk of uh, the cow that this summer was high in the high mountains. So, so, so they eat flour, uh, herbs, and uh, very, very floured food, okay? Not only uh, regular food that w when they are in winter and they are covered in, uh, in the factory, okay? So we take out, we peel the cheese, We can find this kind of cheese at some Italian deli here in Vancouver. So there are a few shops that have this kind of um, product. Cheese. Yes, if you Google for Italian delis here in Vancouver, you can find them. Boza, and there are several others. We have a list of them, Chaffee and uh, Puccini's delis. We have a list of them. Renzullo, too. Renzullo, exactly. And La, La, La Grotta del Formaggio on commercial, I think. Formaggio di Fossa? No, La Grotta del Formaggio is a, it's a, it's a store, it's a deli, it's a, a food store, grocery store, where you find uh, specialty foods and, uh, and the cheese from, from okay. Europe. So you see, I'm cutting small pieces, so it would be very easy to cook with the gnocchi at the end, okay? So we prepare the cheese. If you don't find fontina, you can use blue cheese as well, okay? Never make a fondue of cheese before, okay? We go direct in the pan and we cook everything in the pan. There's no other uh, work to do. Okay, it's very, very easy. So just take the cheese, 
take some water of uh, the boiling water uh, you cook the gnocchi and we go so we change it and we go into the pan okay okay here we are so we have the boiling water this is already salted okay so we didn't put the salt in the gnocchi but we put the salt in the water like boiling the pasta okay it's the same things so we have the pan cooking the gnocchi will take two minutes okay so we can start making the, the condiments in the pan so we take a piece of butter and we add some cold water in this way okay and we start cooking the, uh, the, the butter with the water this why we add the water with the butter because we need to get an emulsion of the fat of the butter with the water so we will have a very creamy fat okay and not only bread uh, gravy okay so it should be very better if you make pasta with butter always start with this water and butter when you have the creamy you will see it in two minutes you can put the pasta inside it jump it and it's done because if you cook only the butter, you will have only the grease, okay? So only the fat of the butter. In this way, you will have an emulsion rich in water and less in fat. So you will have less, less butter than you will need without water. Do you understand me? Okay. So, why do Sorry, there is a question uh, from um, Christina. What if I can't get those cheeses? What can I substitute them with? Claudia is muted, I see. Blue cheese. Okay. Blue cheese, toma, uh, cheddar, if you want to go with other kinds of cheese that is not Italian cheese, cheddar cheese should, should be okay. Okay, gorgonzola, that is softer than blue cheese. And you see? Oh, it's called a Genovese. You see? Now, there is also quite another question. Does this apply to oil as well? When you say about butter, adding butter and, and water, does it apply to oil? I'm not so happy. <laughs> yeah, when you make the cheesy uh, gnocchi, oil is not so good, okay? Of course. When you, if you don't, uh, you, if you can't use the butter because there's a problem of, uh, with the lactose, you can use oil, but don't cook them with the, the cheese, but with the vegetables, tomato sauce, and uh, fish, whatever you want, but not with the cheesy one. Okay, because cheesy wine and oil is not good at all. It's too much. Okay, so um, as you can see, I don't know if you can see. No, no, se vede. You see, it's like a milk. Okay, this is a mashing of water and butter. So I'm ready to go into the water and boiling gnocchi. Claudia, I just wanted to tell you that there are also young Canadians who are following you in these recipes and they are learning a lot, they say. Great. They say that young, the young generations are here too. I hope I will help them in the improving cooking lesson, okay? Young people, I love to teach the young people because before them, I was a young student in kitchen. I start cook, uh, 
studying uh, kitchen when I was 16. So I was very, very young. And my teacher, uh, and I, I can tell you another story from uh, this week, uh, another uh, historical school of uh, cooking, cooking school is with us. So my teacher that today is uh, 86, I uh, 85, I don't remember, uh, but she's not correct uh, teaching anymore as a granddaughter. And uh, she passed to her granddaughter everything, okay? And now she's coming to stay with us, okay? So we put together two schools, the one of my teacher and mine. So the gnocchi are coming up. So I go again on the, on the fire. I put the gnocchi. Take some boiling water. Add the cheese. And let flow everything, okay? Also, Claudia, they are saying that it's good that you have such a good help. Uh, Chef uh, Andrea with you, helping you there. Always, he's the best for me. Ah, uh, when I cook, I used to make everything so I'm dark and clean everything. <laughs> okay, so. You give the time to the cheese to be creamy. You can add some pepper on it. It looks delicious, Claudia. Yes, it is. <laughs> we have to cook just a little bit more until the water and the cheese make a fondue, okay? Sabrina is is taking the the other angle with the camera so that we have two different points of view if in the kitchen. Yes. Okay, here we go. So You see why we call them gooling, drooling, drooling. So we go in the dish. And they have to be creamy in this way. So you see, we didn't add any kind of cream, okay? There's only cheese, water, and butter, that's it. Normally, a lot of people made this kind of uh, julienne gnocchi with cream, fresh cream. But if you add the fresh cream, it will be very, very heavy. And in a few minutes, it will stick everything together. Okay, so just use 
cheese, regular cheese, the one you choose, and the water in which you cook the gnocchi. Okay? Do you have any question? Because the dish is ready. You can have your dinner right now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Claudia, for the presentation. Let's see if you have any questions, if there are any questions. I have a question for you uh, about the kind of pens that you use and that we should use, because it's very difficult for us to understand when we cook, what kind of pens should we buy? Uh, and, uh, the, the pen should be chosen by the weight, in, for instance. Never buy very, very light pen, okay? A light pen means that the metal, that is uh, iron, uh, aluminum, uh, or uh, any other kind of uh, metal, is very, very thin. And uh, this is not good for the conduction of the, uh, the heat, okay? So, first of all, choose by the weight. Then choose the material, okay? For this kind of pen, we are using a regular unsticky pen, but the it's very, very heavy, okay? Um, for other preparation, we choose other kind of materials. Stone, if you have to prepare soup, um, a rusty, egg, egg, uh, overcooked meat, meat, meat or uh, beans, uh, everything that should be cooked for a long time, okay? Arame, uh, che si dice? Copper. Copper, yes. Is, a, is good for the very, very quick uh, preparation. So it, it's good for uh, the steak, butter steak, and something that should be cooked in very, very quick time, okay? Because uh, copper is very, very a good transportation of heat, okay? Then you have uh, other uh, kind of uh, materials, that is iron. Um, the, the pen in iron, I love them very much, but this, this one. Just wait if I find it. I have to find it because the Cast iron, perhaps? The very iron, uh, si, iron Yeah, cast iron is la giza. La giza ah, is the very good. Iron is good for a long preparation. So, uh, stews, stews. Everything that should be cooked, low pressure, low temperature for a long time, okay? Because it's a uh, take together a lot of heat for a long time. Okay. But there's a material different. Come see it, ferro. Iron. No, iron is ferro. Iron is ferro. Io penso iron. che siano le pentole di ghisa che sta parlando. Yes, I think you are talking about cast iron and cast iron, iron is ghisa, the very thick, very heavy one. Yes, like, this one is not good for the very fast preparation. Okay, so it's a very heavy and uh, it takes the, the heat for a long time. Okay? Yes. If you remember the, in all the, uh, in all the old factories, there were, there were the stove, the, the oven in uh, Giza, okay? Mm -hmm. That should be prepared for use for the preparation of the food, okay? So you have to realize uh, what belongs to what, okay? So what I say, it's another kind of a... She's talking about a particular iron pan, not cast iron, but iron pan. That's yeah. iron. Okay, you can find a pen made of iron. Okay. Okay, these are black, okay? They are thin, but very heavy. And they don't have nothing on the bottom to go on the, on the fire, okay? They are just regular in this way. This kind of material should not be washed in any, any way, okay? Just clean with a, with a, with a, no? Ciao! Happiness! 
with the cloth, you just wipe it, wipe it without washing it in the dishwasher, without washing it in the dishwasher, just wipe it clean. Yes. Just clean it and dry it. Right. Some paper, some cloth. Yes. You will take this and put in the, uh, the tray in two minutes, okay? Okay, no, not in the tray, in uh, the tray. You will throw it away. In. You you have to throw it away if you if you like if you. you yes, can. I didn't make up my mind with this kind of uh, explanation, so I, I don't have uh, any words in my mind okay. right now. It's okay, don't worry, it's okay. Yes, and um, but still, Ruth is asking if you have any recommendation for non-toxic, non-stick pen. Um. You have to read the information about the materials they are made before, uh, with, okay? Mm -hmm. you, uh, each pen you can buy uh, goes with uh, the description or the material you have to, to read, uh, to understand with, uh, normally the cost of the pen makes the difference. As higher is the cost, as better is the pen. Okay, uh, Claudia, we have Susan who has prepared the apricots and she would like to show us what Great. she made. Susan, Great. you're there. Great. You are ready to show us there our is. apricots. There it is. Here it is. Echo. Lovato. Show us the apricots, Susan. Oh my God, can you see them? Let me see. Where are you? Okay, I'm let me just there. put you in the ad pin. Vancouver, over here. Okay, show us, show us the apricot. Oh, here they are. What do you think, Claudia? Well done. <laughs> we should cook just a little bit more, maybe, or you didn't put the eggs on top. I did, I did, I did, I did. There, there they are. <laughs> you can put some more in the oven because they have to be just a little bit gold. Oh, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, just a little bit more gold. Like, so just bake. I was a little excited and there was a lot going on. So no. I threw no. it in, took it out. <laughs> Made the gnocchi, just about to cook them. Too much, too fast, did it all. <laughs> but do you taste it? They're good. I need to marinate the apricots because I didn't get to do that, but I will next time. Okay, okay, great. I'm just drinking the cognac instead, so it's fine. <laughs> what the hell? Don't drink too much cognac, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, ciao. Uh, we also have, Claudia, another question. Mara is asking, I didn't get one thing. At how many degrees should I bake the potatoes for 30, 35 minutes? 200 degrees Celsius. 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, so here they work in Fahrenheit. So it should be 400 Fahrenheit. Yeah, 400, 380, 400. Yeah, 380. Yeah, 380 uh, Fahrenheit. And they depends on your oven. <laughs> they also have another question. Uh, how can we purchase your cookbook, Eva is asking. Okay, you can find on Amazon and uh, maybe we can ask to Barbara Carbone, I guess she's online right now, try to find her and she can, uh, she's my distributor of the book. So she, of course, she will know how to tell you and where to go to buy it. Yes. I took to Barbara Carbone. I would like to also to say that the book is in Italian uh, at the moment, it still needs to be translated. So you'd need to buy it in Italian so far. You can find it on Amazon if you Google it. Uh, also at uh, her uh, publishing house, Trenta Editore. You find all the information also on our website uh, if you go there. Internet site on www.cookingfactory.com. Uh, uh, www yes, you can I can send it also on the chat, the, 
or perhaps uh, Sabrina, can you do it uh, the, so that the, the, the right address on the chat or the website? Are there any other questions? Uh, would you like to tell us how did you decide to divide your, your, your recipes in between, you know, Inferno, Purgatory and Paradise? What was the way, which was the way you decided? Uh, it was just a game for us because we just thought about uh, the circle in which we were and uh, the people that were involved in that kind of uh, circle and uh, try to figure out which was the best dish that represent them, mm -hmm. okay? You see, this is the knowing soul and the meaning is two parts of the same things that are linked together. So each recipe uh, means something about the people that uh, we are going to represent. So it was a game. We, sp we spent a lot of time this summer uh, trying to find the link between the uh, recipes that was a traditional recipes or a creative in recipes and uh, try to figure out which was the best meaning of it. Perfect, <laughs> yes. So the best, the best game was in uh, in the hell, you know. It was the easy. Uh, we took the the sweetest part for the heaven because you know um, you see in the you will see in the picture that the, all the pictures about the hell are black. Then we have uh, all the picture about the purgatory that are uh, uh, beige gray. And the, the, the paradise is fluffy white. So uh, we, we link everything and uh, all the picture uh, has two meaning. The first picture of the recipes is uh, that nature of all the ingredients. This means that the creative part of the cooking begins from the morning when you go make the shopping. When you buy the, buy the ingredients, they are already a piece of art. So if you arrange them on the table and you look at them like a piece of art, you will enjoy your day in every single part of evolution and procedure of the cooking time. And the second picture is the dish already finished, ready to be eaten, okay? So you will see the double face of the, of the art and the story of the cooking day, okay? You I have, to, I have to remind everyone that you took the pictures of the book. So, yes, and you're a great photographer. So it's not, not only a great chef, a great cook, but also a great photographer. So if there are no other questions, I really would like to thank everyone for being with us tonight. And I would like to thank Claudia and Andrea for having shown us uh, a piece of, you know, Italian culture through food. So thank you all for being here with us. And uh, this was a light way to enter a new year with Dante and uh, with Claudia and with Andrea and with, with the cooking factory. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. If you have any other question, you can write us. Thank you so much. Bye bye then. Ciao. <laughs> Grazie, grazie, ciao a tutti. Ciao. Un saluto a tutti, buona serata, arrivederci. Ciao Ari. Grazie, arrivederci.